hi this session will be about the standardization rate and access how to see a standardized standardization in an ecg and to how to calculate the heart rate in an ecg and how to determine the access in an ecg coming to the standardization first you will be seeing a structure like this structure like this in almost all the ecgs the height of this if you measure it will come exactly to 10 mm what does it indicate a current of 1 millivolt generated in, um, in my heart will produce a complex measuring 10 mm so any deflection which comes to around 10 mm on an ecg indicates that underlying volt produced in the heart is 1 millivolt this is the first transition 99% the ECG machine will be set in this calibration only. Next thing is the paper speed 25 millimeters per second. These two things must be seen before reading any ECGs. This is called a standardization. So 10 millimeter per millivolt and 25 millimeters per second of paper speed is normally standardized ECG. You can change this in the machine itself. Okay. Next how to calculate the heart rate. This is the ECG paper that we know each one small box is one millimeter. This records my volts and this records my time. So 10 millimeter is equal to one millivolt as we saw earlier. This is represented in my ECG by a structure like this. So 10 millimeter is equal to one millivolt and one large box is equal to 0 0.2 seconds because each small box is equal to 0 0.05 seconds. So, point, it is actually 0 0.04, sorry, 0 0.04. So, five, uh, 5 small box compresses 0.2 seconds. How to calculate the heart rate? First to see whether the RR interval are regular. First to see whether the RR interval is regular in your patient. There can be 1 millimeter, 1 or 2 millimeter difference. But if, if the patient is having a regular RR interval, the heart rate can be easily calculated by dividing the number of big boxes between the RR complexes between successive RR complexes by 300 so 300 divided by the number of big boxes gives me a heart rate if I want to calculate this accurately divide use 1500 as the numerator and the number of small boxes in the denominator so both these are acceptable 300 divided by number of big boxes and 1500 divided by number of small boxes we will see an example here is an ECG we can see that almost all the RR interval is regular. So here is one RR. This here is one R. The distance between this is two big boxes. So 300 divided by number of big boxes 2 is equal to 150. So 150 is my heart rate obviously. So I can calculate this easily. Suppose if I still want to calculate, calculate it accurately. This is this comes to 10 small boxes. So 1500 divided by 10 will give you 150 again 150. So the heart rate of this patient is 150 provided my paper speed is set at what 25 millimeters per second. So what will I do if my patient is having varying RR interval? In such cases you have to count 30. There are many methods. This is one of the easiest method. Count 30 big boxes in a rhythm strip because in rhythm strip only you, will be, you can have 30 big boxes in the 30 big boxes you have to calculate the count the number of QRS complex leave out the first complex so remaining complex you will have some answers like x y z and multiply that number of complexes by 10 gives your heart rate we will see an example here is a rhythm strip of a patient with varying RR interval so from here to here is 30 big boxes so I have to omit my first box so remaining I have 1 2 and 3 so this patient has 3 QRS complex I have to multiply this by 10 3 into 10 30 30 is my heart rate of this patient simple count 30 boxes leave out the first complex you have to start from the first complex here so this is used as a zero value so you have, you have to omit this and count the number of QRS complex in the 30 box and multiply it by 10 gives your heart rate very simple coming to the voltage voltage is the 
peaking of the complexes produced on an ECG. Normally is 10 mm per millivolt. This is normally standardized. The more closer a lead it is to the heart, the more bigger will be the complexes. The more distant the leads, the complexes will get smaller. So my limb leads are placed far from the heart when compared to my chest leads. So the chest leads will have a bigger complexes when compared to my limb leads. So there are some conditions where I will get high voltage and there are some conditions where I will get low, quality, low voltage complexes. Low voltage complex. When to call an ECG ha as having low voltage complex? If not even a single QRS in the limb leads measures more than 5 mm and not even one single QRS complex measures more than 10 mm in the chest leads, then it indicates that the patient is having low voltage complexes. And the commonest causes are COPD. In COPD, there will be barrel shaped chest and your leads are pushed far away from the heart so the patient will be having low voltage complex hypothyroidism pleural and pericardial effusion and amyloidosis in amyloidosis your myocytes are replaced by the amyloid protein so the amount of current generated will be low so the patient will be having low voltage complexes high voltage complex is usually, is usually seen in chamber hypertrophy which we will see in another class so how to determine the axis so we have seen how to see the standardization, how to see the rate and how to see whether the patient has low voltage complexes. Coming to the axis, what is axis? We know football, there will be goal post here, here goal post here, here there will be 11 players, here there will be 11 players and the aim of these 11 players is to push the ball inside this post and the aim of these players will be to push the ball inside this post. So if I have this ball, a ball here, I can't just kick the ball straightly here. I have to pass it here, pass it here. But ultimately my net direction will be towards this post. And this is called as axis. SA node is there. AV node is there. Bundle of is right bundle, left bundle. Though my current from here flows to the AV node, then goes here and here. My net direction will be in this direction because left ventricle compromises the mass majority. So my net direction, this is called as the axis. So the axis of the leads placed is determined is shown in this picture for example lead one we know it is placed in the right upper limb and lower limb so this is the left upper limb right upper limb a line joining this will be equal to 0 degree or 180 degree in the graph sheets so lead one equals to 0 degree or plus or minus 180 degree lead two we know it is placed in the right upper limb and left foot so it will come like this uh, corresponding to 60 degree and minus 120 degree on the negative sides and lead 3 it is placed on the left upper limb and left foot it will come more or less like this minus 60 degree and plus 120 degree so this is the hex axial system represented in a degree so lead 1 corresponds to 0 or 180 degree lead 2 and lead 3 60 and 120 just change the minus and plus in lead 2 it is plus 60 and minus 120 and lead 3 it is minus 60 and plus 120. AVF it is we know straight line so it is not easy, uh, not a hard hard one to remember. It is plus 90 and minus 90. AVR AVL, AVL again 30 and 150 just change, change the interchange the symbols plus or minus symbols you will get the degree of those leads. So normal axis is between minus 30 to 120. So after determining if the axis of my patient comes between here to here, it indicates the patient is having normal axis. This is right axis, this is left axis and this quadrant is called as a northwest axis. So next coming to the perpendicular leads. The reason why we are dealing with the perpendicular leads will tell you later in the upcoming slides. So this is the lead 1 that is 0 and 180 exactly perpendicular it is AVF plus or minus 90 so lead 1 and AVF are exactly perpendicular to each other likewise lead 2 and AVL are exactly perpendicular to each other and 3 and AVR are exactly perpendicular to each other so lead 3 the perpendicular lead is AVR lead 2 it is AVL lead 1 it is AVF so what are the methods to determine the axis there are many methods I'll tell you some three to four methods you choose the easiest one method one you have to look for the equiphasic complex in the 
लिम्ब ब्लेड्स लिम्ब ब्लेड्स आर वन टू थ्री ए वी आर ए वी एल एंड ए वी एफ वी वन टू वी सिक्स आर प्रिकॉर्ड लेट्स आर चेस लेट्स सो यू हेट लुक फॉर द ईक्फेसिक क्यूआर कॉम्प्लेक्स वॉट इज एन ईक्फेसिक क्यू आर कॉम्प्लेक्स विच कंटेन्स ईक्वल पॉजिटिटी एंड नेगेटिविटी द आर एंड एस विल बी मोरलस ऑफ द सेम मैग्नेट्यूड दट इज कॉल्स यूक्यूफेसिक सो लुक फॉर द ईक्फेसिक क्यू आर एस कॉम्प्लेक्स सपोज इफ इन दिस ई सी जी यू कैन सी दट द ईक्फेसिक कॉम्प्लेक्स इज इन द ए वी एल वी नो फॉर द ए वी एल द एक्सैक्टली पर्पटिकुलर लीड इज लीड टू सो लुक अट लीड टू लीड टू सोज द मैक्सीम पॉजिटिविटी सो इन दिस ई सी जी द ईक्फेसिक कॉम्प्लेक्स इज इन लीड ए वी एल एंड द पर्पटिकुलर लीड सोज मैक्सीम पॉजिटिविटी सो यू कैन गो हियर and lead to show the maximum positivity here is lead to lead to there are two degrees one is 60 and other one is minus 20 minus 120 so positivity it is 60 so the axis of that patient is 60 degree simple just look at the equifacial complex and look at the perpendicular lead and look at the corresponding degrees either it could be a positive or negative and see whether this exactly perpendicular has positive or negative complex then that is your axis what should i do if my ecg is not having a equifacial complex then look for the smallest complex in the limb leads and again look for the perpendicular lead and the axis will be axis will be corresponding to the degree of that lead this is another method so for example in this ecg you can see that the avl has the smallest complex for an avl again the lead to is the exactly perpendicular lead lead to shows positivity Lead to the degrees are sixty and minus one twenty. Here the QR score predominantly passed you, so sixty degrees is the axis. Simple. Next, this is somewhat difficult. It will take time. Choose two leads and mark them on the x-axis and y-axis easily. Preferably lead one and AVF. For example, this is the lead one and this is the lead AVF. So lead one in lead one, this is the QR complex. You can see the QRS complex positive component is five and the negative component is one. So the net component is four. So lead one it has four units. So along the x-axis mark a point in the four fourth millimeter. Then look at the AVF. Here it is nine millimeter. So mark a point here in the nine. Drop a straight line from here and drop a straight line from here. They will intersect at a point. From the center of the x and y axis draw a line to meet this intersection point this gives you a degree that is axis of the patient this is it will take time next the other method fourth method is look at just the avl lead one and avf lead one and avf if both are both have the positive qrs complex it is normal axis if both has negative qrs complex then it is not twist axis If lead one is positive and AVF is negative, it is left axis. If this is negative and this is positive, this is right axis. This is another method. And the last method is a simplest one, a bedside one. Just hold the ECG in your hand. Hold the ECG in such a way that your left fingers touches the lead one and right fingers touches the AVF. So you are holding an ECG paper. Your left fingers touches lead one and right fingers touches avf so see whether the patient's qrs complex in lead one and avf are positive or negative remember you have to hold your ecg which shows only positive complexes suppose if your ecg shows positivity in both lead one and avf then you will be holding the ecg in both your hands because both shows positive complexes if you hold an ecg in two hands it is normal axis suppose if my patient has negative complex in the lead one and positive complex in avf so in lead one the lead one was uh, touched by my left hand so i'll take my left hand because it shows negative complex i should not touch negative things hence i'll be holding the ecg in only right hand because right hand avf it shows positive degree so the axis is right axis because i hold the axis, uh, ecg in right arm Suppose if my patient shows positivity in lead one and negativity in AVF, I'll be holding the ECG in only my left hand. So the ECG axis is left. Simple. 
if both source negative it is not to taxes